Again, this is the first of uh, CSP's monthly webinar series uh, for 2017, and we will be discussing strategic technology planning. We, the agenda for the day, we're going to start with just uh, a brief uh, introduction of logistics and intros, go into why do you need a plan, what is in an IT plan, how to build your plan, and finally, as Clayton mentioned, wrap up with some question and answer. First, for some logistics. Uh, I know everyone is extremely busy. I would be remiss if I didn't pass along a thank you. Uh, we know uh, you have a lot of things in your day, a lot of these invitations, so we appreciate your time. And, and my, my aim to you is to make best use of your time as possible and provide as much value as I can. Secondly, you have been muted upon entry, so um, as was stated, please type in any questions, and at the end, we will answer those questions. Finally, I do want to respect your time. Again, I appreciate you being here. I want to respect your time. I know the invite said 30 minutes, or I'm sorry, said an hour. Actually, uh, in the invite, though, we had mentioned 30 minutes, so I definitely want to respect that 30-minute time slot for you. I do not want to bore you with an hour, so we will try our absolute best to keep this to 30 minutes to let you be on your day. And, and also, though, before I dive in, one is I'm terminant mea culpa. Uh, you have, may have noticed that uh, the current IT trends to consider when building your 2017 plan are not in this agenda. Some of our marketing material uh, did have a lot about that section. Once I started working the presentation, and to be honest, we started planning this before I built the presentation itself, I realized that it was just way too much information. I wanted to respect your time, but also in providing that value to you, wanted to make sure I could do that, and trying to get everything into one was simply too much. So today we are really gonna talk about what what is the plan, how do you do it, why do you need to do it, and uh, next the next step, our February webinar is gonna be part two of this exact same series in which we are going to dive into some of the current trends that we see on the horizon in 2017 that you should strongly be considering when building out your plan. So again, I'm sorry for the confusion on that, but more to come, and again, I think it, this is definitely the best way to provide as much value as possible. So extremely briefly, um, for those of you who, uh, who don't know us, I, I looked around at the invites and uh, registrations. Uh, we do have some customers, but also have a fair share of brand new customers, or brand new people who are engaging CSP. So uh, for those of you that don't know us, we are a managed IT services and solutions firm based here in Raleigh, North Carolina. We were founded in 1995. We're a family-owned and operated business that really takes a lot of pride in delivering a, a premier customer service experience and, and making IT that business enabler for you. We want to be a true end-to-end -end partner uh, for our customers. We focus on managed services, which is the proactive support side. We have a very large and growing, fat, rapidly growing cloud segment of our business. And then also our, the third part of our business is technology solutions. So um, installing on-premise phone systems, servers, wireless, networking, security, et cetera. Um, and then as for me, so my name is Steven Riddick. I am the VP of Sales and Marketing here at CSP. My contact information can be found below. Uh, I've been with CSP for five years and have thoroughly enjoyed working with the team and seeing all that, that we have accomplished. One interesting piece of background for me that I do think is relevant for this, um, I started my career at Cisco Systems, obviously a tech bellwether, uh, learned a, a lot uh, about the technology industry while at Cisco. But my background, I was actually a liberal arts major. I was a history and economics major, went on to get an MBA. So I do think you'll see today and, and even into the next one, we start talking about technology, I probably approach technology from a business standpoint much more than the technical nitty gritty standpoint. So. Uh, hopefully, you will find that as we go through the strategic planning, that is valuable to have a little bit more of the business approach as opposed to just the nuts and bolts of the technical side. So without further ado, while you're really here, let's talk about strategic planning going into 2017. And so first, the, the simplest question, why? Why is strategic IT planning important? Uh, everyone knows the, the obvious cliches. I mean, there's so many out there, but there's Easy one from Yogi Berra. If you don't know where you're going, you'll end up somewhere place else. Again, it's, uh, it, it's simple. It, it's extremely true. So at a high level, yes, that is why you need a plan that spans any part of your life. I think we would recommend having a plan. But with IT, I'd argue that it is even more critical. All of your systems are integrated. Everything is connected to each other. And also, IT is involved in every single part of your business. It is an underpinning of everything that you do as a business. 
Not having a plan can lead to two major problems for your business. One being an accidental architecture and two, IT as a call center. So we will briefly dive into each of these. First, what is an accidental architecture? Some of you may be familiar with this term, uh, this representation on the left. It is uh, not, not the absolute best, but I still think it gets the point across. And this was just something I found on Google, but started with a simple design, but marketing want, wanted more windows supported. And so I guess in my terms, what do we really mean by this? With IT, so many people just turn IT into perpetual band-aid where you have your systems, but one group needs this, you're at a trade show and you hear about this great technology, so you add that, something's starting to break, you need to optimize, so you add this, and just over time, uh, you are just reactively responding to these immediate needs without consideration for long-term, uh, without consideration for long-term needs, uh, excuse that, that repetition there. So, and this is something I see with, with so many of our partners, so many of the people I talk to in this industry that, that IT really becomes reactive. And again, it is just always responding. So, you know, if trying to figure out how to describe this just over a, a web uh, audio setting like this, really like an amoeba, just over time, your IT morphs into something you never expected, just in all different directions. You're adding different things, responding to different technologies, and, and it just morphs into something that you never expected from the start. So, so why is that such a bad thing? And and from what I've seen in my seat, I mean, there's three really big reasons. There are a lot more, but the three biggest. One, it's costly. A lot of times when you're doing that, there's a lot of redundancy in your capital expenditures. You're not streamlining those operations. And, uh, and thus you're spending in multiple buckets where if you consolidate and have a, a single plan, you could definitely recognize some economies of scale and some efficiencies of your spend. Uh, also, from a cost standpoint, it is extremely expensive to support. Nothing seems to work well together. You're always having to uh, spend those OPEX dollars excuse me, uh, to support this infrastructure that was really never intended to be working together. It's also performance hindering. A lot of times, it's a challenging user experience that limits their productivity. And, and finally, something that we'll be talking a lot about, especially in the next session, is, is the security risk. Um, by not having a cohesive security plan, you really are exposing yourself, exposing your business to some major con security concerns. And that is uh, a little little nugget for next time, the number one trend that we're seeing going into 2017 from our students. So the, the second big problem with, uh, you know, with not planning is it really turns IT into a call center. Um, and, and there are many interpretations for a business person about what is that call center, but, but here's what I mean by it. And that is reactively ledgering, leveraging IT in an operational capacity. So a lot of times from the top down, uh, a business owner, a board, a, a, a functional owner within a business will simply say, here's what I need, here's your budget, go do it. But again, IT is really that reactive call center. And you're only looking at IT as part of operations with a budget that doesn't really generate that strategic value. And I think something you'll see as we move forward, I think IT has changed so much that getting it more in the forefront, not just of an IT plan, but of your strategic plan can really unleash the power of IT within your organization and leverage IT um, at, at, at the forefront. Um, you know, and I think the best examples of that, there's, there's so many, but and you hear them all the time, but say a, a Blockbuster versus a Netflix, for example, you know, just a great example of somebody, yes, Blockbuster had IT, Blockbuster spent on IT, Netflix really used IT and leveraged IT to enable their entire business. And I think obviously you can see now 10, 15, 20 years later, excuse me for not knowing the exact date, but how that market has shifted. So you definitely want to be planning in a strategic fashion where you are leveraging IT as part of that business model of that business plan. So, I mean, why do you need a plan? And this comes up all the time. I have so many examples, and this is one, uh, this actually, I've named them Acme Corporation just because I don't wanna uh, throw anybody under the bus, but this is a company that, that we did get engaged with this past year. And, and I think this is a perfect example of something that we see over and over. This is just a very simple example. Uh, it doesn't really get in the strategic nature that I was just speaking of, but really the accidental architecture is not having a plan. So a, a company, Acme Com Corporation, has a 35 users in a single office. In 2015, that organization realized that they had an old PBX, an old phone system, that was going end of life. So the office manager who's in charge of phones decided that they needed to renew their PRI, that's their circuit to get the phone calls, 
three years on that contract and upgraded their phone system. Uh, 25K, it was a fairly baseline phone system. So fairly, fairly simple solution, one would think. And then in 2016, the CE moves forward and says, you know what, there's a lot of reasons we need to be moving our operations into the cloud. So they move to a major project and move their servers into the cloud. Well, in order to do this, Acme Corporation bought a 50 by 50 fiber pipe. So again, that's fine. You need that large fiber pipe if you're going to be moving into the cloud. Honestly, at, at first glance, it probably seems harmless. I mean, these are two different systems, right? I mean, so what, what's the big deal? The big deal really is the, the $25,000. If you're strategically thinking ahead, strategically laying out that plan five years in advance and knowing what's coming down the pipe, this organization would have realized that, okay, well, the fiber in the the fiber that we need for the cloud is big enough, is robust enough, high performing enough that that could easily handle our traffic for a hosted voice solution as well. So a hosted voice solution would cost roughly the same amount as the PRI. There was no need they needed to renew that PRI for another three years at the $750 on a monthly basis. That 25K CapEx spend in 2015, excuse me, was, was a completely avoidable expenditure for them. And again, that is a very, very simple example, but just something that thinking of more than just a year out, but thinking multiple years in advance can be so important and uh, so valuable for your organization. So obviously, I mean, we would argue that there is a better way to do it, and the better way is just ahead. So, so let me start with, with one quick preface in that I understand, I mean, budgets are paramount. And when I talk to a lot of people, they don't admit this at first, but the more that I talk to them, one of the biggest reasons that I think people don't plan is because they're scared. They're scared of budgetary implications. They're scared that if they engage an organization like us, we're going to say, well, you have to do X, Y, and Z this year, and here are your risks, and you need to fix all these things, and they just can't afford it. And that's not what we're saying at all. For us, though, if you plan and budgets are a very important part of that plan, but at least you are building a, a long-term vision that allows you to align your long-term buying decisions to build towards that strategic goal. So you're just building something and working together each year, each step growing in a cohesive direction. As opposed to the accidental architecture, which is just, again, a bunch of random pieces of the puzzle that, that aren't working towards any strategic goal. Plus, the second piece that we talked of with IT as a cost center. Instead of IT being a cost center, you can proactively engage IT and unleash your business investments as a strategic business enabler. So uh, that is something we will dive into more here momentarily as well. But what I was speaking of earlier, really leveraging IT as part of your business plan and not just IT as something that's an afterthought for you. So next, what is in that IT plan? When I look at, at building strategic plans, a lot of people throw around the word strategic very loosely, very casually, and just say, we're doing strategic planning. Well, to me, there are really three tiers of quote unquote strategic planning that I see, and really, I guess, planning that I see out there. And that bottom piece of the pyramid is something that I feel like so many people get confused when they talk about strategic planning. Really, they're just doing maintenance planning. They're looking at their list of inventory, they're saying, I have these devices, these PCs, I need to refresh my PCs every so many years. My server uh, software is going into support here in two years, so I need a plan for that. I need to get a new firewall in three years. And their quote unquote strategic planning is all within IT and really it's a maintenance refresh planning cycle. And, and I'll get to it, there's nothing wrong with that. You have to do that. That is very, very important. But again, that is just the baseline. So the next step up the totem pole is the risk planning. And I would say some customers or, or some companies, excuse me, not just customers, but some companies uh, do better about at least taking a step up and engaging more business level uh, discussions, but from risk planning. What are my corporate little risks and how can IT help me in that? What do I need to be doing from a strategic level uh, at a corporate level to engage IT to mitigate my risk? And that's something, again, I would say better than just maintenance planning of some companies do it better than others. But again, they're starting to use IT a little bit more strategically. But then the final thing that, that is very, very challenging for a lot of customers, but I think where you really start to see the value of, ID, of IT is to truly engage IT at the strategic level, at the board level, at the corporate vision level, when you're laying out that corporate vision, 
letting IT be a part of those discussions as well. Again, it's something I said earlier, not simply an afterthought. So uh, just a little bit more detail here in each, obviously, and to start again at the bottom, moving up the maintenance planning, properly managing for your refresh cycles for performance, budgeting and IT risk mitigation. So it's really all within IT. Risk planning, leveraging IT to help mitigate your corporate risk. So again, that's more the business level, engaging business executives. Maybe if, for example, if you realize that your business continuity plan, you can only be down for X amount of time. You engage IT and you say, okay, here is a business objective of ours. How can we fix that? That is the type of risk planning that has to initiate on the business side. Because IT can't just build a business continuity plan without knowing what are the business goals in place. So that's that next step up. But then the final one, again, as I said, the strategic. IT planning, seamlessly integrating with, corporate, with your corporate plan. And that's when you really are able to see IT as that business enabler and not IT as a call center. And, and I know I was alluding to it as we went, but a word to the wise, please don't confuse maintenance planning with strategic planning. Two totally different concepts. Again, you need to do maintenance. I'm not saying that's not important. And at the very least, if all you're doing is maintenance, at least take that next step to that next level and make sure you knock out maintenance and risk planning. I think that's an important part of the discussion. So how do you create an IT plan? And I think one disclaimer before I go into this, I mean, there are, are books, there are entire MBA degrees built around strategy. So it is a travesty to attempt to solve this riddle in a few short slides, but it is something that, that I'm going to, to try to do today. So Stephen's way too simplified steps to strategic planning. At the highest, highest, highest level, you need to understand where are you now. You need to understand where are you going and then figure out how do you get there? What are the steps that you need to take? That seems so simplified. I know it is, but at the same time, I feel like it is an important starting point because I feel like too many people get overwhelmed by the, by the mass that can be strategic planning. So at the highest level, I really do think this is a great starting point for you and for your organization. So where, where I want to spend a, a lot, the meat of the, the rest of our, our short time that we have today is really trying to figure out, well, how do we accomplish this? So the where are you now? Um, and I'm sorry, I do know this is a little bit of a busy slide, but I think it's a very important one. Where are you now? Um, maintenance, or from an IT perspective, again, that, that bottom one, maintenance planning. Ultimately, you got to start with just doing an audit of your IT infrastructure, understanding what you have. This is something I'm always amazed at when we go and talking with people who maybe aren't customers, but talking with companies out there where I simply ask them for a network diagram and, and they're not able to produce that or ask, hey, do you have a, an asset list to just see how old some of your gear is? What type of software is running on your gear? Not having stuff like that, that is the very baseline. You have to understand what you have. I intentionally and, and do not want to make this a sales pitch. I want to make this an informational session for you. Whether it's us, whether it's somebody else, though, or whether you're investing in tools yourself, get the tools required for you to be able to see this. Feel free to reach out to us. We have a plethora of different tools that we can do to be able to understand what you have from an IT perspective. It's uh, not too challenging to do and something that I would highly recommend. So the next part of the where are you now to take it to that next level up is from a business standpoint and, and then the risk. And, and that's, you know, perform a risk assessment, establish a SWOT. What, how are you doing as a business? Where are your business vulnerabilities? And again, part of this is understanding your IT vulnerabilities, but also is understanding your business vulnerabilities. Again, business continuity, I know I mentioned that earlier, but that's a great example. What are your security protocols? What do you do uh, What are your security policies? And and this is a much more of a consultative engagement. A firm like us or many others similar to us can do that if you don't have the expertise in-house. But whereas the, the top line, I would say, man, it's, that's a pretty simple audit that you can do. Again, I'm not going to say it, it takes no time, but it's relatively easy. At the business level, probably need what we term more of an assessment. You get a little bit deeper into the weeds, start to look outside of just IT, interview different people, understand how they use IT, understand where they're going, how they're securing themselves and things like that. And then the final piece from, from uh, you know, understanding where you are now, it's really looking at the strategic vision of the company and analyzing your MVP, your mission, your, your vision, your value proposition, um, and looking at the five-year plan and just starting there. I, I, I hope, I would imagine a lot of companies have those. 
Uh, if you don't, I, I think you need to really start there, but at least understand, okay, as a company, where are we heading? So I can then start to think, okay, how do I need to be thinking about IT as a way to get me there? So again, that's the, the where are you now? So the next, this middle piece of this slide, where are you going? Starting at, at that bottom, and again, sorry, I, I flipped them here, I apologize, but uh, at the IT level, examine the refresh cycles and the new technology trends. So one, always make sure you have a command of knowing when different things are going into support. I mean, there's some very easy ones out there. Everyone knows Microsoft. I'm sure people just a few years ago know that the big push when Microsoft uh, Server 2003 went into support. There was a lot of refresh and a lot of strategic planning, or again, strategic in quotes, if you will, refresh planning over, okay, how do I need to adapt and migrate to newer platforms? So those are the easy ones. But also don't forget about a little bit of the harder ones. What's my different, what's my firmware like? What's the age of these? Are technologies that even if they're still supported becoming technically obsolete? Again, and something I mean by that is, let's take security, for example. Even if I have something, maybe a Cisco device, it's still working, it's still under warranty, but it's been in there for five years. Has the technology changed so much in five years that I need to look at, consider upgrading that technology just to make sure that I'm properly securing myself, maybe from a firewall perspective. Uh, and there as well, I think it's important to just understand the technology trends. That's where it goes back to the business obsolescence, but make sure you understand where the market is heading. So then moving to, to the next step from where are you going at the business level, you know, I think it's important to take that SWOT and then set business expectations, engage the IT team, and together identify ways to mitigate that risk. So a conversation that I have all the time with people, um, with IT people, is feeling trapped because they don't know the business goal or the business objective or the business expectation. So again, let's just take that, let's take a disaster recovery, let's take up your backup solution. The business ultimately really needs to decide how long do I need to be keeping my data for? How long, whether it's compliance purposes, whether it's regulatory purposes, whether it's just how long do I need to be able to feel comfortable that I can run my business? What are my time parameters? What are my expectations? What's my business loss? If we go down, how fast do I need to be back up? IT can't just design a, a backup and disaster recovery plan without having some of that business input. So here again, IT and business working together to identify ways to mitigate the risk and really understand the business expectations. And for the strategic, um, as part of business planning, provide consultative, proactive guidance on how IT can drive the business. So without saying it sounding cheesy, give, give IT a seat at the table in some of the very high level conversations of your business. Uh, it's much more a consult, consultative discussion, not getting into the weeds, but just understanding where's my industry going? How can technology be leveraged to make sure I am doing the best things I can to maximize my productivity, increase my revenue, create a more efficient way to work for my people, and stay on top of these paradigm shifts that we've seen in the industry all the time and staying one step ahead and not turning into, say, a blockbuster um, who, who is you know, left a step behind. So finally, how do you get there? At this point, really all three of these need to come together for the, for the cohesive single plan. You need to be identifying the, the strategic objectives, identify the short-term goals and priorities and objectives, you know, deliver action items, build scorecards, and ultimately execute, continue to check in. And that's not something we, we have the time, or I, I doubt any of you have a lot of the, the concern of how to get too deep into those details or weeds there. But again, I think the execution is something that just uh, you need to set the objectives, set the goals, priorities, set the action items to ultimately get there and then track it. And, and there at the bottom, again, I know I've said this, but I, I just to reiterate yet again, I mean, don't forget IT both, and, and when I say IT, I mean your internal IT department or a partner such of us, I mean, we can handle the maintenance planning very well. So we can build a maintenance plan for you. What we can't do is really go up to those next two levels without some business input. The more buy-in you need from the business leader. So whether you're in technology, don't forget that you need to be asking your business leaders those questions. Whether you are a business leader, don't forget that you need to be giving direction. Again, not to say, hey, I need this many gigs or this much RAM or not the technical thing, but say, hey, what are the business requirements that I need my IT to have? Uh, and I think that's something extremely important to make sure everyone is working well together moving forward. So with that said, um, thank you so much for attending. It is 1027. As said, I did want to keep this under 30 minutes to respect your time. And so 
Thank you for, uh, for, for hosting us today. To everyone who joined, thank you so much for your time. We definitely appreciate it. I hope you found this valuable. Please know too, we're always trying to improve, always trying to learn. We did, uh, we started this last year where we had four of these webinars, one and a quarter last year. Honestly, they got really good reviews and really good feedback. So this year we decided to up them to two a quarter. Um, so eight total this year, but um, any feedback is always welcome. What things, topics you would like us to discuss, questions you may have, ways that we can improve these webinars, uh, open to feedback. And again, thank you so much for your time today. Enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, we look forward to working with you soon.